As part of the franchise's ongoing 30th anniversary since 2021, Sega plans on releasing a game called Sonic Origins on June 23rd, which, for those of you that don't know, that's actually Sonic's birthday. And this remastered collection is pretty much the first four Sonic games, but with new features. This whole collection is meant for a newer audience, which makes sense because of Sonic's recent success, those being the two Sonic movies, which will probably get a Knuckles spinoff and, you know, a third movie coming out already, and the anticipated Sonic Frontiers mainline open world game. So with all that in mind, it seems like Sonic fans are getting lots of content their way, but a lot of people are actually losing faith in this Sonic Origins remaster collection. From DRM issues, Sega's involvement with the project, the pricing, you know, things like that, and just other controversies that are making people lose faith in this collection. But that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. I'm going to be going over the new features, the bad, you know, the other collections, things like that. So without further ado, let's get started. So with this remastered collection coming to modern platforms, there's actually quite a few good new features that I could see a lot of new users benefit from. All four games have widescreen support now, instead of the old 4x3 aspect ratio. All games now have missions, which pretty much just adds more replay value to these games. And probably my favorite one here, but animated cutscenes that pretty much connect all four games into one big story. So if you guys remember the Sonic Mania Adventures YouTube shorts, it's pretty much going to be like that, you know, 2D animation. And, you know, considering these games are, you know, 16-bit and only have a few sprite animations to convey the story, it's good that they added these animations to expand and show off more in these games as plot and whatnot. So that's probably my favorite feature here. And then we have the three modes for this collection. We have mirror mode, which pretty much just flips all the stages. And then we have classic mode, which pretty much reverts the games to how they were meant to be played. And there's no added content or features in that mode. But that's where anniversary mode comes in, which changes the lives you get in classic mode into coins. So that you can spend those coins for unlockables and other stuff, which we don't know what those are yet. And this mode also includes the drop dash from Sonic Mania. And this mode also includes widescreen as well. So with all those new features being said, it seems like a good starting collection, you know, for a new audience. But despite all those improvements and added content, there's lots of controversy and just people losing faith in Sonic Origin. And this is where the bad stuff comes in. Now, one of the first bad things about this collection is that it's retailed at 40 bucks. The reasons why a lot of people are iffy about this pricing is that for these four games, on other platforms, you could have gotten them way cheaper individually. Hell, even like a few couple bucks, like a dollar to five bucks. Yes, the new additions are welcomed and benefit the, you know, newer audience or, you know, just someone who's already played Sonic before, but it's just too much for a small set of games, you know what I mean? And that also brings me to the pricing chart, or the different additions you get with this game. So yeah, right off the bat, looking at this chart, it's already confusing and just way too much. So there's pretty much a standard edition and a digital deluxe, which adds these extra content which aren't anything major, which begs the question as to why they decided to do this in the first place. Another thing is that the Sonic Mania developer, Headcanon, who has also worked on a few classic Sonic games, including Mobile, has clarified that their involvement with Sonic Origin was only with Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and nothing else, so pretty much everything else was developed by Sega, since it's pretty much a purely Sega developer project. On top of that, Sega actually delisted the first four Sonic games, Sonic 1, CD, 2, three and knuckles on steam so if you guys go on steam right now you won't find those games on there anymore so for anyone that had those games on their wish list it seems like they're not gonna have to wait for sonic origins to be released which is a pretty scummy move by sega and to top it off even more sega is going to include drm with this game on steam for anyone that doesn't know, DRM is pretty much a way to prevent or discourage piracy for video games. And the current approach towards this is some games need an online check-in to see whether you own the game or not. So in order to actually play this game, you may need to have an internet connection on at all times. 
Now, like I said before, four games isn't a lot, and with these first four Sonic games, most have already played these many times, including myself, because they were individually ported or in another collection. Sonic Jam, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, Sonic Classic Collection, Sega Genesis Classics, Mobile Ports, the Wii Virtual Console, you know, we've already played these on so many other services that, in my opinion, it would have been better if they just combined a lot more games together than just four, especially with the price they're going for. And that brings me to the Sonic Mega Collection, which was released on the GameCube originally and included 14 Sonic games, including Sega ones. And there was also a section for the Archie comic covers that you could view, illustrations, manuals, trailers, you know, things like that. And eventually Sega made an enhanced port called Sonic Mega Collection Plus, which instead of 14 games, it includes 20. And back then this was retailed at 20 bucks. And then there was also Sonic Gems Collection, which included Sonic CD, Sonic R, Sonic the Fighters, and just a lot more other games. I just don't like when companies do the bare minimum when it comes to collections or don't give enough games. And another example would be Capcom because they released the Mega Man Legacy Collection and Mega Man X Legacy Collection. And those two collections had two parts and they pretty much split the games for each series. Which in the past they did an anniversary collection for both series and they just included all of them from you know, that franchise, you know, Mega Man and Mega Man X. In my opinion, they should have done a 3D collection instead. I mean, when was the last time we got a physical copy or even a re-release digitally of Sonic Adventure, Sonic Heroes, and Sonic Adventure 2, you know what I mean? I feel like lots of people would be interested in a physical copy of games like those. Despite this remastered collection already stirring up controversy and problems before its release date, I still think it's still going to sell pretty well to the consumers it's trying to reach. I mean, this is pretty much only for newer audiences of Sonic, but Sega could have benefited from both fans, you know, old and new, with adding newer games and other extras and whatnot. One of the questions I have for this collection specifically is, will there be potential DLC? Now, the reason why I say this is because, considering there's already kind of a paywall before its release, and the fact that Sonic Mania received DLC, I can see it happening. I mean, I could see them potentially adding mo more games if this does well, but we're gonna have to wait and see for that. But what do you guys think about Sonic Origins and, hell, even Sonic Frontiers since, you know, IGN pretty much showed horrible gameplay of the game? Are you going to get this collection, or are you going to save off until it goes on sale, which it most likely will considering Sonic games usually go on sale, and there's tons of Sega sales as well. But let me know what you guys think down below, and let's have a discussion about this. Until next time guys, adios.